From the 1st of January 2014, new waste regulations come into effect. All Scottish businesses, no matter how small, will need to separate these key recyclables. Plastic, metal, glass, paper, card and most food businesses will need to separate food waste. Well, this is the Royal Botanic Garden, Edinburgh. Um, we've, our first site was established in 1670 on the other side of Edinburgh, but we moved to this site in 1820. So nearly 200 years here, and we're a world-renowned organisation in the world of horticulture, scientific, botanical research, and we're also an amenity service for visiting public and a tourist attraction. So we have about 700,000 visitors a year. So on a busy weekend, we can have two to 3,000 visitors coming through the gates. And the, uh, we've got about 128,000 plants here on this site. And we've got a large herbarium with three million plant specimens in it as well. About 220 full-time equivalent staff. We've got um, the gardens, 10 visitor glass houses with lots of different climatic zones. Uh, we've got two cafes, a restaurant, a visitor centre, exhibition spaces. It has been a challenge, but um, we started in about 2004 with our first initial um, recycling programme. We have recycling streams for, for paper, cardboard, plastic bottles, cans, uh, batteries, metal, the garden waste, so the compost, um, and also food waste now recently introduced, which has been a bit of a challenge, but it's been helped by collaboration with our catering franchise. There have been challenges in terms of first getting the funding to buy additional equipment, bins, um, make space to, for the different storage requirements, and also getting um, buy-in from cleaning contractors and the people who have to actually have to handle the waste. Um, and then getting, to some extent, staff buy-in. We have a lot of, lot of staff who are very keen to make changes and a lot of staff who um, find it more difficult. But, so there have been challenges, but it's been, it's been fine to overcome it. It's not, been, it's not been insurmountable. We recycle about a third of our, what I call the domestic waste, from our offices, from our staff, from, from, from the people who use the building. So that's not, not including our construction, construction waste and sort of larger materials. There is a lot of green waste and it was around the early, early, early 2000s that we started to, we used to take some of our green waste away, but we've started to collect absolutely all green waste right down to tree trunks um, over to our nursery. And we've invested over the years in equipment which can um, manage the, the enormous compost heap that we have. And that enables us to return absolutely all green waste to the garden and we do you can see around the garden tree trunks that have been chipped down and mulched around trees and you can see um, on the flower beds and so on the um, compost that we've used. We have recently sourced um, pots, plastic pots which are made from 100% recycled plastic milk bottles. The way they're designed they can be unclipped and stored flat and they last for a lot longer than conventional plant pots. Wall of them is 100% recycled and a small part of them, the base, which isn't recycled, is made in the local cottage industry in Haddington, which is very local as well. There are a lot of staff who work here live locally and there were members of staff who were aware of the, the uplift contractor that we now use. Our criteria were a regular uplift, basically, that didn't, didn't cost too much. So we sourced them. They're, also, they're a local business and we were keen to use a local business where possible. Uh, and to support a local business. So we selected them and once we found that it was, they were working well, we then rolled out the further waste streams to them because they were able to offer that service to us. And they've also, they've been able to help us with other waste issues and they've done a little bit of training with some of our staff as well. So they've been quite an all round service. The food waste is a different supplier. Um, there's a much larger quantity of food waste and it's organized by our catering franchise and it's Mighty who uplifts about two tonnes per week of food waste and um, that's taken to an anaerobic digester. Apparently it's a very big plant. We've got a group of staff organised to go and visit that plant on the, and later on in May. There, there has been cost investment but it's considered to be worth it 
and one of the values of it is that we are we're now we're well ahead of compliance with the regulations it means that we're consistent in our message that we're giving to visitors about the gardens and the facilities that we're providing for them as a visitor attraction and for staff as well over time there will be a, a cost benefit as we reduce our waste to landfill which we're constantly working to do so we can we pay for less waste uplift as landfill tax costs are rising. I subscribe to an email service called NetRegs but also I have contact with Zero Waste Scotland and other organisations so I've been aware of the, the changes coming. The change in regulations has been really useful for me to be able to say we've got to do this, it's coming, we may as well be prepared for it and, and put the changes in place as soon as possible. We can save you money with free specialist advice and support on energy, water, raw materials and waste and get you regs ready.